Hi guys, I've had some problems with my computer, so I'm using my phone here. Uh, welcome back to another video. It's been like forever, I know that. I've been busy selling my house. I'm, it's not sold. I haven't even gotten any bids yet, but it's been shown many times. Uh, over 27 families have been here to look at it, and there are more that wanna see it after the, we have kind of like a fall break now in Sweden this week. Uh, my daughter's home from Southern Sweden, where she is going to like a boarding school for a year um, in music production. It's great fun to have her back. But anyway, I've been trying some incredible fragrances and I'd like to share some with you today. And I'll start with these two um, oil-based fragrances from Hermetica. I've talked about, I've been working my way through this discovery set that I have from them with like 13 fragrances. Well, actually the 13th one is a fragrance enhancer, like a molecule one type of fragrance that doesn't smell very much on its own. That one, I'm I'm not into that kind of stuff. I did try it. I tried to like layer it and see if I could, you know, some of my weaker fragrances, if I could sort of get them to, to perform better. I didn't notice much difference. So anyway, but these two, these two fragrances, one is called Patchouli Light and the other one is called Green Lion. Uh, it's actually in one word, Green Lion, not Green Lion. Um, I, I think it's just, you know, French people that have tried to, you know, give these a name and then they don't really know what they're doing, sort of. But anyway, it's a it's a green uh, fragrance with, um, what does this have? It, it just, I, I thought it was just going to be like another green fragrance, like kind of like a freshy with maybe some citruses and stuff. But it has like, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get the notes here. It has like juniper berry. Um, this is just like so not my style. Wait a second. Here it is. Okay, amberwood, juniper berry, patchouli, basil, rosemary, cardamom, and lily of the valley. And I don't like lily of the valley either. So this was a real surprise to me why this, why, how this worked on me. But it, it is very warm. It's a warm fragrance. And it's funny how they, they, they call cardamom like a, a cold fragrance, I think. Or is it? I mean, it does have a little bit like when, you're, um, when you grind cardamom kernels, um, or these little pouches, you know, what were they? I don't know what they call them in English, but then, uh, and you get this white, these black little kernels, they're white in the middle. And then when that kind of comes out, they, um, you get kind of a little bit of a toothpaste-y kind of cold burst, but often you find um, cardamom in kind of warm, spicy food. So that's why it kind of, for me, it kind of goes both ways, but this has, it's very, um, very warm and green, and has really nice depth, like the dry down had a certain sweetness to it, uh, maybe from the cardamom, I'm not sure, but it was like, I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed wearing this um, Green Lion. And then there's Patchouli Light. That's kind of like their version of Portrait of a Lady. And I was like, oh no, I don't like, you know, rose and patchouli fragrances, but I thought I'm gonna give this a chance. And I'm so glad I did because I really, really loved it when I wore it. Uh, like the dry down, it even made me sort of open up to rose again. Like I want to start, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Rosai Monday from Perfumum Roma and a little bit of, what else did I, did I come to think of? Let's see where I put the notes of this one. Um, patchouli light. Okay, so it has lemon rose, whatever that is. Lemon rose, patchouli, violet, leather, and iris. Um, okay, first I've written... The first time I, I, I wore this, I wrote too much rose, similar to many other oud rose patch frags. Um, and then, and then later, because that was like at the end of the day and I'd worn it all day and enjoyed it a lot. I wrote, really love the dry down um, where the rose sweetness has deepened, gorgeous. Um, so I kind of turned around completely. So maybe I will go back and try some of my rose patch fragrances. Um, I, I'm just so bored with this category in general, but sometimes you just have to force yourself to try something. And I'm glad I did. Okay, so then there's another one that really surprised me. I got like six new fragrances from this guy in these little two milliliter decants. Um, and one of them that really surprised me that, that I liked so much, and I, I did go um, on a recommendation from Ramsey, and he, because he said, you know, one of his favorite fragrances is Bella Me, and he talks about like you need to go and find a vintage formula. But if you're going to buy something current, you should go for the flank or Bella Me Vetiver. So I, I decided to try two milliliters um, from this guy, 
and I have loved this fragrance. It is such a beautiful fragrance, very, not very similar to Bellamy, and I only have a Bellamy vintage, and they're quite different. This one is much lighter. It's a, it's a, like a light, powdery, semi-sweet. I mean, it has leather, but it's like just as much about the spices, about the, there's citrus in here. Maybe there's some lavender in here. Um, it's, it, it does lean masculine for sure, but I got a real good compliment about this. I, I was kind of hanging out with a new friend and she was like, what are you wearing? She literally loved my fragrance. And then I was wearing both actually Bellamy Vintage and Bellamy Vetiver, but I let her put her nose up to my hand and she was like, no, this is the one. Um, it's, um, let's see what it has. Russian leather, Vetiver, LME, Styrax. So some kind of like incense -y notes. Amber, Carnation. Uh, cardamom, iris, vanilla, civet, basil, and patchouli. Um, yeah, cardamom, no lavender. I guess it's the iris that gives this real, it's kind of a real French, powdery, sophisticated feeling. Um, a little bit of sweetness, maybe from the florals there. I mean, there's amber and vanilla too. So, I mean, oh, it's so darn good. For, created by Jean-Claude Elena, which normally is not my favorite perfumer. I think many of his stuff is like a little bit too watery, but I really love Bellamy Vetiver. And guess what? I get to buy the bottle of this guy because he, he heard that I really loved it so much and he said he needed to uh, go on a perfume diet and he said he could do without it. So I'm, it's on its way. I bought it from him. It's a partial. Uh, I've also, um, I'll save this, Diaghilev, I got a, um, I, I'll save that for another video. Um, I also got from DS and Durga, Amber Kiso, beautiful amber with a real smokiness. I love this. Um, it also has maple, patchouli, iris, leather, hinoki. I thought hinoki and cypress, they're both listed separately, but I thought those were the same note. Um, this is very similar to Le Lyon, so I, I mean, I wouldn't need it because I have that. If I would totally run out, I might replace Le Lyon with this one. I think they're very equal. They're both really, really good. Um, okay, and then I have tried two from the House of Perfume and Roma, um, Alba and Oxiana, which I find I'm a little bored with this DNA. Like I, as soon as you smell these, oh, it's it's a Perfume and Roma. You know it like straight away, and I'm not sure what it is because they have there's no no overlapping notes. Oxiana is is all about like patchouli, myrrh. Um, maybe musk and something else. Uh, whereas Alba is more of an iris. And let's see, I, I just put the notes down here. Um, let's see. Oh, it has iris and has these nutty almond and hazelnut with iris, sandalwood and amber. I mean, maybe that explains why it smells like candy to me. It's, it's very candy-ish. It's very similar to Suavissima and a bunch of other ones from this house. I'm just a little, I don't know. I think I've kind of had it with this DNA. I'm kind of, I mean, if I had a perfume house, I would love to have like a DNA. Like as soon as you smelled one of the fragrances, you'd know, oh, this is Kiki's house. You know, like this is there, this is this brand. Just like a band has their sound. And immediately when they start playing, you hear it's them. Um, I like that. I like that. But I'm, I think I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of full when it comes to Perfume Aroma DNA. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in other things. Uh, a fragrance that I really, really love that's not my style at all is this one from Eta Libre d'Orange. It is called Frustration and it belongs to their high-end line that, you know, where the, the labels are a little bit more like made from metal. Uh, I think the bottles are like black or very dark anyway. This is like, this is so good. It's it's vanilla, but it, it's like combined with with rum and and vetiver and chestnut and uh, like sweet baking spices, perhaps. Let me see. I think I have notes from this too. But it's like it's it's not the kind of fragrance that I typically go for. Uh, let's see. Okay, it has rum, cinnamon, and cumin in in the top. I don't get the cumin too much. Uh, if you're sensitive to cumin, don't worry. It's not too bad. Uh, Vanilla, vanilla, absolute labdanum. So it's kind of a heavy, it's heavy. 
um, like resinous, but it also has like, and then chestnut bourbon vetiver and guayacol, I guess is kind of a synthetic gua guayac wood perhaps. Uh, it's really good. It's from the house, I already said, Etalie de Drange. Um, then I've also tried one that I'm kind of a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's good, but it's not like full bottle worthy perhaps to me. And it's called Parfumerie, uh, sorry, Parfumerie General is, is the house. It's Pierre Guillaume. I, I don't know if they've changed names or if this is the old name, the new name, um, but they're the same. It's called Suede Osmanth 5.1. And it is a really light, musky wear with kind of like Iris Prima, but Iris Prima is, is more like Iris and suede. This is more like fruity and suede, but it's kind of like real feminine and soft. I'm just gonna remind myself here what it was about it. it oh, and now I remember. Um, it's like really, really good when you when you spray it on, but it doesn't take long until it's kind of like gone like i get that feeling like it's a real skin scent it's like it's really good when you first spray it but then you have to kind of hunt for it like where is it where is it am i still wearing it like that so i i don't think that it's quite worth it to me but it's it's really nice it's really beautiful uh, uh so uh, the fragrance itself i mean i really i really like it okay so where were we then i gave patchouli noisette from les indemodables another chance and I'm glad I did. I tried this in the warmer weather and I thought it was really boring. And, um, and it is very simple. It, not much happens like from beginning to end, but what made me go back to this is when I tried on pistachio from DS and Durga last week. Um, that has a pretty heavy dose of patchouli. This is different. That is much more sweet and vanillic. This is like not sweet. I find it interesting. The only notes listed are patchouli and hazelnut, but the, the patchouli itself has so many facets that you could just wear it by itself. It's so, I don't know, just so deep and satisfying. It has kind of a, it's kind of like dry and dusty and earthy and spicy and a little woody and maybe a little hint smoky. It's, it's just super satisfying. And I, I mean, they, they, they've made this with a new method. They've used ultrasound producing this. I mean, not that I really care. I care about what it smells like, but I just find it interesting. I, it, it's just, I mean, I'll not, I won't be buying a bottle. So because, the, because of the price, they're, they're really, really expensive, but I respect this house a lot. They use a lot of naturals and they specify, I mean, they're really into the raw materials. Um, so that is, is something too that I, I do respect. Then the other day I wore... This is a 2010 version of Shalimar EDT. Oh my God, I've enjoyed this so much. It does have a little problem with the fishy smell on the top. And I think I've now kind of like circled. It happens with fragrances with citrus notes, notes mostly. It never happens to like heavy amber fragrances, like that the, the decant itself starts to smell fishy. But thank God, it doesn't, it doesn't come onto the skin. It's only slight on this one, not too bad. But when I wore this the other day, I mean, seriously, this does not behave like an EDT. This is incredible. This projected for hours and hours. It was so good. And for those of you who are not familiar with Shalimar, it's kind of like a, an amber, powdery amber with kind of a citrusy top uh, and a beautiful vanilla in the bottom. It's, I just enjoyed this so much. I'm, I'm really gonna hunt down a bottle of Shalimar someday. Um, I mean, that's a, I, I, I have also another decant of like a vintage Shalimar and I've also tried the, the really old PDT. And those three, I, I think that I'm out of the PDT now, but the Parfum, Parfum de Toilette, they used to have a concentration called that, that I think was about like an EDT, but they are, um, they're all very similar. So I think back in the day, like 2010, uh, the regulations were still in a way where you can make quality perfumes. Um, that's what I hear a lot of people say anyway. The new modern Shalimars, I've not been as thrilled with. Um, so uh, I, I have actually tried the new Iris one. Um, I just thought it was really nothing special. I wouldn't buy a bottle. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you about um, my favorite favorite fragrance from this week that I absolutely love. It's really, really expensive, so I probably won't be buying a bottle, but I might buy a few samples. 
This fragrance is incredible, and it is Hera from Papillon. And this uh, Liz Moore's mate created this for her daughter's wedding. And it is like a white floral, not only white floral, though it's it's orris and ambrette. Um, it does remind me a little bit of Angelique that I already have, but this is much more, um, that one is more creamy. This is a little bit more, it's very, very floral. And it reminds me a little bit of old Guerlain's. I, I'm thinking of like Vol de Nuit, L'Heure Bleu, L'Heure de Nuit, Après Londe, all these ones. But, but this is not watery like a Guerlain. A Guerlain is like you're walking through a garden and, and it's, there's, it's like all the leaves are all dewy. Um, this gives you more of a, it's much more concentrated, like you've reduced it, like you've, you've taken away, the, all the water has been evaporated and you just, you're just left with the, the gist of like the floral aroma. It, oh, I'm sure there's oak moss in here, it's not listed, but the, 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 fr the notes listed are like orris, um, let's see, I've got this somewhere, where did I hit? No, I just tried that, let's see, it's, it's here. Okay, so um, it's Oris Narcissus. I'm not super familiar with Narcissus. Jasmine, Heliotrope, Ambrette, Rose de Mai, Musk, Orange Blossom, and Ylang Ylang. So it's like, it's a floral fragrance. And I'm like, I would never have thought like a, such an expensive to spend so much money on a, just, just a floral fragrance. But this one is spectacular. It's just incredible quality. And I wore it like, did I wear it yesterday or the day before? It, I, I, it, it was just kind of radiating. Like it was, I smelled it all day. This is her first extra de parfum. So it's really, really concentrated. Also really expensive. But I think you could probably compare this with like a, 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 a bottle twice this size because it's so, it's so intense. And I only have this little tiny, it's like one, not even one milliliter left. I've worn it once. I can probably get, since it's so strong, I'll probably get like, Three, two, three more wearings out of this, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I love this. This this is so darn good. And I'm, I don't know, white floral fragrances. I That's kind of like how I entered the niche world. Um, well, I mean, Jasmine is like maybe the only white. No, okay, Jasmine and Orange Blossom are, I guess, like the white florals. Narcissus, I'm not sure if it's a white. Um, and then there's like Heliotrope and Oris, as I consider more like a purple flowers. And then there's a little rose, and then the ylang ylang is a yellow flower, tro more tropical. But it's like, I mean, it's a wedding fragrance. But if you use, I, I feel like super feminine in this, in this fragrance. I mean, I'm sure a guy could wear it too, but it's incredible, incredible. I love it so much. So definitely 10 out of 10. And then I'll just mention a few before we hang up here uh, that I didn't like, and one the one that I'm, I'll never ever put onto my skin again is Purpose by Amouage. I mean, that was absolutely horrible. I mean, Quentin Beach, I don't know what he's up to. I was thinking, what is it that's so bad in here? It's like, it has, I mean, it has this Akigala wood that I think is like Givaudan, um, you know, only they can use it in their fragrances. Um, or, and he also uses a note of mystical, which is like a molecule type note. But that's also found in Blanche Bette from Liquid Imaginaire, which is that I really like. So I don't know what the real problem is here, but I think it's an absolutely awful fragrance. Like I was watching TV yesterday, only had a little bit right here, and I was just like, oh, oh, this is horrible. You know, I just, I just couldn't stand it. Really bad. Um, and then I, and then I, um, I tried two fragrances from Tamine. It's a, I think a house based in London where. The old creative director from Amouage, Christopher Chong, 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 I'm not quite sure how to say his name, um, went after he, after he was at Amouage. He's like a new creative director there at Tamin. And Tamin is a house that tries to combine like Eastern and Western, Western culture. And I thought that sounded interesting. I just thought I'd try these two fragrances. So I bought them from someone in the group, but they're both so masculine leaning. So I decided to pass them on already. <clears throat> the Hope and Green Pearl. And the hope, I'll start with that one. The first thing I thought of when I when I smelled it was like, this is a tobacco fragrance. This is really like a boozy tobacco, really boring fragrance. Um, but then I checked the notes and there, were, there was no tobacco in there. Uh, the notes were cinnamon cloves. Let's see. Oh, there's a, the ones on Fragrantica are not the same as if you go to the brand's website. 
on the website of the brand, it's cardamom, frankincense, cloves, cinnamon bark, pink pepper. So, you know, quite spi a lot of spices there and also really, really sweet. In the mid, immortelle flower, patchouli, cedar, and nagarmatha. And nagarmatha is like a really, really heavy uh, note. Leans very masculine. And in the base, labdanum, musks, vetiver, and olibanum. Um, I didn't get much of the smokiness. I get more, mostly like super sweet, like a honey tobacco fragrance. And I felt like this has been done before. This smells like so many other fragrances. And I just feel like we don't need another fragrance like this. Um, like maybe a little bit like Angel's Share, that kind of fragrance. Like so, so sweet. Uh, don't like it, don't like it. Um, the other one, Green Pearl, I liked. I really liked it. <clears throat> that one had, um, it gets compared to Silver Mountain Water from Creed, but it has apple added. That's what someone wrote. And I'm not so familiar with that fragrance, but I really like this. It has tea and artemisia in the middle, and I really like artemisia and tea. So it has a little bit of a bitterness in there, and then, but it's also slightly sweet, probably from the tonk beam, and maybe a little bit from the apple. And then in the top, there's like bergamot, mandarin, neroli as well. And then it also has some black pepper. I, I mean, I, I liked it. I just felt like I'm not gonna spend my time on this really masculine fragrance. Sorry, I needed a little drink. Mm. I'm just gonna wear things that I really love. There's just too few, there's too little skin, there's too little time. I'm still feeling almost stressed in the morning to choose a fragrance. I'm not gonna spend my time on the ones that I really, that I really feel like are not my style. I wanna wear things that I wanna wear and um, it, it needs to be kind of just, you know, following your, whatever is attracted, attracting to me because this is just all for fun so far. I mean, I have still not figured out what I'm gonna, you know, how I'm gonna support myself, but by selling the house, I will at least improve my economy a lot, as much as if, I, as if I got a job, because then I can invest some of the money, I'm moving to like half the size, to a small house, uh, or an apartment, or a row house, or um, I'm looking for something uh, smaller and more convenient for me. Um, but I have really enjoyed like um, this, just decluttering, or just enjoying a house that's free from clutter, uh, can highly recommend, you know, spending some time getting rid of things and just, I just, in every room I have like green flowers, like uh, plants, and then I bought like fresh flowers, kind of like this one. Look at these, look at these. They're like, they're so incredible. Um, and I have, in, in other rooms, I have other kinds of flowers. Um, and they all kind of wilted, so I had to go out and get new ones, and I've enjoyed that so much. I, I've never spent time putting flowers in vases and stuff, but it really, it really lifts the rooms. I mean, it really makes such a difference with some fresh flowers around, and I have, you know, three pots of basil here in the kitchen, just kind of like, it's, it just kind of gives so much, there's something happens. And I've really liked the way, you know, the stylists have used rugs, um, how they've used, uh, they just have such nice items like, and, and cushed like couch cushions with structure on them and um, every, uh, like just changing some of the stuff to lighter colors. Now maybe this is like super Scandinavian uh, and maybe you guys, I don't know where from, from where you're watching. Someday when I fixed up the house for a showing, I'll like take you around the house uh, so you can see what it looks like when it looks at its best and I can show you kind of like what they've done. Because uh, I have learned, I've learned a lot. I've seen and a lot like what lamps can do, just to have like matching lamps on each side of, of you know of the bed, and um, it it just makes an incredible difference. I think uh, and big rugs, big rugs that are like neutral colored, uh, just to put your feet. I just make, gives creates a, such a cozy atmosphere. Anyway, okay, this was all for today. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna make some do some updates on my computer. Hopefully, I'll get it going. Uh, so I can have, you know, a little bit higher quality uh, on my videos. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment. Have you tried any of the ones that I've tried? Do you have any opinions about these? Have you tried Frustration? Have you tried Amber Kiso? Have you tried Bellamy Vetiver? Uh, highly, highly re recommend Bellamy Vetiver because that's not so expensive either. I mean, I really highly recommend Hera, but it is really pricey. So, I mean, I, I do believe that you need to take the price into consideration when you're recommending things. I, I, I find that a lot of influencers out there, they, they don't even, you know, they don't even think about the price. 
And then people have to go find them and then they're like, oh no, this is so expensive. So um, I'm not calling Bellamy that ever a cheapie at all, but it's at least, it's also available. You can find it like probably in your local department store and it's not that bad, you know? So um, yeah, those are my recommendations and non-recommendations for today. Okay, see you soon.